back to the channel. Now before we talk about this, I just want to say a quick hi to a young gentleman in America called Chris. And despite having spina bifida, he's set up his own wood turning channel called the Stuttering Wood Turner. Uh, and if you get a chance, please go over there and say hi. Uh, he deserves the support we can all give him. Right, now this is a piece of sycamore uh, burl, which I bought off eBay. I bought it with my uh, heart and not instead of my head because it does have a few issues. If you look at the side, we've got bark inclusions going quite a long way through the centre. We know they go all the way through because there they are at the other end as well. Uh, you can also see evidence of it on the side walls as well. So I am going to try and turn a natural edge bowl from this in this kind of area here. Uh, but the one thing I want to try and make sure, and I'll be keeping a constant check on, is that these bark inclusions don't go all the way across and make it unsafe to turn. The last thing I want to have to do with this is add resin again. So we will take it slowly, uh, take it very, very carefully and see how we get on. Now, because this is the known quantity, uh, we know that looks flat and it looks fairly dry and safe. There's no rotten wood in this at all that I can see. So I'm going to make this the bottom. So I'm going to be eventually when I turn it around to hollow it out, I'm going to be chucking it around this area here because it looks like I might be able to get a nice piece of solid wood to do it there. So if that's going to be our center, I need to work out the biggest circle I can get here and then trim off the edge bits so we can get it mounted. Okay, I'm going to get out my chainsaw and chop off these bits and we'll see what we're left with. Okay, we've trimmed those edges off. Not quite as confident as I was at the start because we've got a, a bark inclusion that goes all the way through to about there. There are some joined places so we'll have to mess around with the design and see what we can come up with to get a bowl out of this. So I'm going to mount it between centres and uh, we'll see how it goes. Okay, when you're dealing with a, uh, a wood like this, which has an awful lot of unknowns, uh, you've got to try and keep yourself as safe as possible. So uh, luckily I can move my control box to there. Uh, everything I do on this bowl will be done from well to the side of it. Uh, we're going to be starting off at around 600 RPM. Everything's locked down nice and tight. And we'll see how we get on. Just stop just to put a glove on this hand because it's uh, some of these bits coming off are a little bit sharp. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun, isn't it? There are other ways we can deal with this to keep us a little bit safer, but let's go a bit further up the sides before we start making any huge decisions. At the moment it's relatively safe because it's got the internal structure of the, uh, the wood to keep it in one piece. It's when we start doing the inside that we could start to run into real problems. Okay, I can really see this taking shape. 
I was feeling slightly more confident about these uh, bits. This one really is the one that's going to make or break this project. So I don't know how deep it goes deep. It at least goes inside about another inch inside that way at that side so we can't really turn it away so I think I'll just continue shaping a little bit more and then start worrying about the the base the shape I know we're going to be very low on this side but it's a natural edge ball you don't get to decide what overall shape is you get what it gives you okay I'm going to work a bit more onto the foot to give myself a tenon and then we'll uh, I think we'll go straight to sanding after that Excellent, we've got the tenons sorted. I've done a few uh, shear cuts with the ball gouge just to smooth out the surface, and it looks pretty good actually. There was a bit of tear out, there's still a bit of tear out there, which I'll just quickly give another scrape over. But there was a lot of tear out around these areas, and that's all gone, which is good. So I'll just give it a quick scrape around here, and then we're all ready for sanding. I'll set up for sanding. I'll let you watch the start, but then I'll uh, I'll bring you back when we're done. sanding went well. Uh, now sycamore is quite a light wood and I don't necessarily want to put a, a finish on this which is going to to darken it too much. So with that in mind I bought some blonde shellac which is this stuff. Uh, blonde shellac is basically normal shellac with the wax taken out of it so it's lighter in colour than a normal shellac finish. Now I've mixed this up with a bit of isopropyl to make a sealer so I'm just going to put a bit in this pot and I'll put it in on with a brush so we can get in all the crevices and then we'll let this harden for a few hours. It darkens it a little bit but uh, not half as much as a normal shellac would have done. Quite some amazing grain in here. Okay, All right, we'll let this sit for a couple of hours to firm up and then we'll uh, rub it back a little bit, get the raised grain off and then we'll put a final finish on it. Okay, it's nice and dry now. Uh, I've gone over the surface with a bit of wire wool just to get rid of any small imperfections uh, and I've also just made up a mixture here it's mineral oil uh, or butcher's block oil it's got many names with uh, the same shellac in but this time the shellac is of a higher concentrate okay we're just going to apply this with a cotton rag We 
can buff this in and it should hopefully give us a nice shine at the end. And then we'll be ready to turn this round. I would normally lose uh, like a, a linseed oil uh, with a shellac mix, but as we're trying to keep this wood as light as possible, I've gone for the mineral oil, oil instead. Now when I go to buff this in, it is gonna spit out at me an awful lot. So make sure if you were to try this, you're gonna wear full uh, face protection as well. So I'm gonna quickly grab my face shield and then we'll buff this in. pretty good. Right, we're going to turn this round and we'll start working on the inside. Okay, this is where the fun's going to begin. We know we're safe for a couple of inches going down before we start hitting where these bark inclusions are. So we'll take it down to there and see how we're looking. tape on here just so I know where not to cut beyond okay because it's quite difficult to see as it's going around it's a bit of a blur so I can't cut outside that point Just swap, quickly swap over to a, a hollowing tool because this is going to work best. I've got more area to work on a pull cut, and the ball gouge is struggling to get this far in with the uh, tailstock there. And I don't want to move this yet until, uh, well, ever, but I'm going to have to remove it at some point. But I want to leave it as late as possible. So I'm going to see if I can get close to the edge with this thing as we're getting deeper. See this, this is the, uh, the layer of uh, bark we're going through, the bark inclusion. So hopefully when we clear this bit, we'll be where we want to be to finish. Hmm, kind of forgot about that. I thought it'd be a little bit higher. Okay. Very big hole opened up there, which doesn't look an awful long way from the bottom. Let's see if we can 
can get these calipers in and have a Oh, maybe all right. <laughs> maybe. Well, I've got this uh, nub still sat here, but underneath there, there's not an awful lot holding it on, so I'm not sure I'll just take it off now. Or is it giving me some support? <laughs> okay, it's not giving me any support. <laughs> right, well, that's gone. Well, it'll make one bit of my life easier. With you out of the way. Okay, I think the phrase here is proceed with caution. I'm swapping over my tool rest so I can get into the centre with as much support as possible. that bottom so hopefully I can get in better with my calipers just to see how much depth we have oh we're okay we're not going to join the full club quite yet right so I'm going to continue to try and clear out this and get a little bit narrow on the side but I don't want to get too narrow because I need a bit of wood to hold this thing together I'm starting to think we might actually pull this off. Okay, it's gone far better than I think we deserved. We've got a, a hole here, which I could go down a bit further, but it may get worse. In fact, I probably think it will get worse. So I think it's time to put a scraper in here to even things out and then sand. Okay, that's as good as we're gonna get with the scraper. So it's time for sanding. I'll do a sympathetic sanding on the edge. I'll spend most of the time working on the inside. All right, okay. I'll let you watch the start, and then I'll bring you back when it's done. Sanding's all done. I've blown off all the dust I can from in the crevices on the bark and from this side as well because we've got quite a few holes going all the way through now. So I'll put on with the, the shellac sealer and again we'll let this dry before going any further. I think that'll do it. Right, I'll give that a couple of hours to dry, then we shall come back. Okay, this has had a good time to dry, so we can go ahead and apply the final finish, which is the same as we did the outside, it's the shellac and the mineral oil. Now, when you mix these two, you'll find that they don't mix particularly well, and if you leave them for a while, they will separate. But what it does, if you mix it before applying it, so it's a nice kind of a creamy color, uh, the oil helps the shellac go on nice and smoothly. Okay, I'll buff this in. Okay. 
I'll take this off, turn it around, take off the tenon, and then we'll take a look at what we've done. And there we go. A live edge sycamore bowl. Live edge, live walls. It's alive all over the place. This one's been quite a challenge. It, we've been very, very lucky. How we've managed to actually get this turned, I'm not quite sure. All the way through, I was thinking of uh, Phil over at Shady Acres Workshop, thinking, what would he do? What would he do? What would he do? Because this is kind of the area of his expertise, and he loves doing stuff like this. So if I had the chance to do it all again, I think I would have still bought this. But then I would have sent it over to Phil to, to let him work his magic on it. I'm very glad the bark stayed on, because that really helps make this piece. I'm very glad the bark inside the, the wood itself managed to hold together as well, because that's uh, that was interesting at times, especially when we made that great layer going across the base. It's Tuesday today. In just two days' time, I'm going to be releasing another video uh, on the 1st of June, and that is going to be uh, a giveaway bowl. Now, I'm not going to give any clues as to what I'm going to make, but I've looked and looked and looked, and I can't find anybody having done anything similar on the internet. So I'm going to class it as a world's first. I haven't built it yet, so it may be the world's first huge mistake, but uh, we're going to give it a go and see if we can pull it off. And I'll be giving you that away in the next video. To be able to win, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and have left a comment uh, on one of the videos between uh, or since we released the last uh, giveaway up until now. Uh, the more times you leave comments, the more chances you have of winning. And apart from that, thank you very much indeed for watching. And we'll see you soon, very soon, two days' time, in fact. Thank you. Thank you.